888-948-7948. Again, the number 888-948-7948. And I invite you to join us again next time for a special edition of the Brain Health Show. Make it a healthy day, everyone. You have been listening to The Brain Health Show. The program you've listened to is a paid advertisement for Prevagen. The statements made in today's program have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. AM 1470, WNN, with more of what you need to know. Tune in for No Bones About It with Dr. Alvin Stein, Tuesday mornings at 11 on South Florida's Health and Wealth Network, AM 1470, WNN. Talk health, talk wealth, talk politics. Talk 1470. WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show, the place to fine-tune your swing, dress for the course, club, or cruise, and get tips on the best places to play and stay at the right price. Vacation or staycation, host Dan Shube, along with his expert co-hosts and guests, will tell you where to go. To play golf and vacation, that is. Now, here's Dan. And welcome to the Golf and Travel Show. I'm your host, Dan Shube. And tonight, like we always do at this time, we're going to talk a lot of golf. We're going to talk plenty of travel and a little bit of music, maybe even tonight. Uh, we've got a great show in store for you. In just a few minutes, we'll be chatting with uh, a friend of the show, uh, one of the few guests that's been invited back. We don't always invite him back, but this one we do. <laughs> and that would be Bud Boucher. Of, uh, he's the general manager of the Mission Inn Golf and Resort up in Howie in the Hills, a place that I've been to a couple of times this past year. Still celebrating their 50th anniversary. We're going to learn a little bit more about the final festivities that they had for this anniversary year, as well as some pretty cool deals that they got coming up in the new year. And a little later in the show, we will be talking to um, a friend of a friend, uh, and that would be Amy Holtzman, and she's the president and founder of a charity called Rock Can Roll. And um, it, it's a very, very cool charity, and she does uh, get to hang out with some of the stars of the rock business and do some really good things for people who are in need. Uh, also, we will have a golf tip in just a few minutes, because we love to do that to help everybody with their golf game. And I've got some... Awesome travel deals, uh, Dan's deals that we will talk about a little bit later in the show as well. Uh, we may touch a little bit about some of the events that took place in Washington and Havana as well. Um, opening up uh, Cuba, there's a lot of people that have been traveling to Cuba, and now that's all going to be a little bit different. So um, it'll it'll be very very cool. But what I like to do at this time, uh, first and foremost, is introduce my co-host, and that would be none other than Jess Frank. He's a PGA teaching professional and owner of the Jess Frank Golf Academy at Boca Dunes Golf and Country Club right here in Boca Raton. Jess specializes in on-course instruction with V1 video analysis, and he believes that every lesson and swing is different. Jess likes to focus on the scoring part of your game, those short shots that are taught on the golf course, and that instills plenty of confidence. Some of you may know him from his work at some area country clubs, such as St. Andrews, Boca Lago, and Broken Sound. Just loves to teach and has a passion for the game because golf can be challenging, but just makes it easy for you to learn and excel. And how are you doing tonight, Jess? I am excellent, Dan, and uh, another beautiful week uh, down here in sunny South Florida in Boca Raton, and a uh, beautiful day today for sure. And uh, good evening to all of our listeners out there. Another awesome golf and travel show planned for tonight. Yeah, and, and I was actually playing the part of tourist a little bit today in this beautiful weather. I, yes. I, I took a ride uh, up and down the intercoastal in the Jupiter and Jupiter Island area. And uh, I mentioned before we started the show to you that I was hanging out for a little while in Tiger's backyard. We were uh, right behind his house. You're hitting balls in his backyard? Uh, he's no, I mean, he's got a whole course He does, there. he does. You can hardly <laughs> see it. I mean, the, the landscaping is so lush and it totally oh, surrounds yeah. his house that you really can't see it. You can see 
tons of cameras, though, that are facing in every direction. So he could see us. <laughs> um, we can't see him. I'm sure. Um, so, so that was kind of interesting. And I, I also saw uh, Jesper Parnovic's house, yeah. which is beautiful, too. Greg and, Norman's uh, up Greg there. Norman's yeah. house we did yeah, see yeah, also. A lot of guys up there. Yeah, and another house that's being built that rumor has it is uh, Phil Mickelson's house, just about 10 houses up from Tiger's house. So that could be a well, little interesting. He, he wants to ex- escape the California tax code. I think yeah, is I, who can blame him? <laughs> <laughs> right, save you know, some money. Uh, yeah, for I, sure. I mean, Jupiter Island. If if you gotta like you know move, it's not a terrible no, place to have to move no, to. No, no, it's beautiful up there. It was a beautiful day, and yeah. our, our tour guide was was excellent, and uh, got a little bit of sun, which is always nice, especially during the business day. If you could be out on a boat for a little while, it's it's not too bad. No. And prior to that, I actually had lunch at the new uh, River. Side, I think it's called okay. Complex in Jupiter. Nice. Where they have a brand new Wyndham Hotel and a lot of new restaurants, yeah. Tommy Bahamas. Um, we yeah. ate at a place called Bravo. Uh, it was very nice and just a few doors down from where Tiger is opening his new bar oh, restaurant yeah. as well. Yep, yep. So um, he's putting his fingerprint all over the Jupiter, uh, Palm Beach County, Northern Palm Beach County area. Yeah, I'm sure he is. I'm, I'm surprised he got into the restaurant business, but hey, you know what? It's all it's all good. Tiger's well, got the funds. You know, when you hear him, it yeah. sounds like he's going to be real hands-on and heavily involved. This tour guide who seems to know all the dirt, he says that he's not involved at all. No. He's just giving his his name, his name and that's about yeah, it. He's so, leasing the name out. Yeah, he is, said he's going to be hanging out there yeah. and drinking and uh, I'm yeah, not so no, sure. No, no, Tiger is a health guy and uh, sure he'll he'll probably make his appearances there when Into he needs to. Into the grand to, opening and, you yeah, know, once yeah, in a blue moon. That, that place probably won't concern him. He's, he's getting paid one way or another if it makes it or not. So. Um, I'm sure he <laughs> is. So, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's always nice to kind of play the tourist and, and get a feel for yeah. what... No, it's uh, cool. It's a great area. It, it is a great area and they're doing a lot with it and, of course, on a beautiful day like today. I mean, today was just the Chamber of Commerce kind of a oh, day. Oh, it's perfect. I mean, about 75 degrees and sunny, a couple of uh, clouds, and that's yeah. about it. I mean, it was uh, it was beautiful out, and uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be out on the range, giving some lessons, even hit uh, hit a couple balls myself. So oh. it was it was nice. It was nice. It was a, it was a great day. A very very good day. So. Well, I'm glad to hear it, and I, I noticed, um, you know, a few of your posts on Facebook from some of the students that you've been yeah. working with this week. So I, I, I keep up to date with uh, <laughs> some of your lessons and, and yeah. what's going on that way. Absolutely. And um, I guess that while you were out there working today, there probably was uh, something that uh, you were doing out there that might be useful for our listeners as well. Yeah, and you know what? And this is probably one of the um, one of the one of the greatest tips that uh, that I've seen that's going to help somebody improve their ball striking. And uh, and and it works with every shot in their bag, whether they're well, just I wouldn't say putting, but I'd say everything from chipping uh, to pitching to punch shots to uh, to f- the half shots to full swings, and it really has to do with the weight shift because I see so many people who swing the club and their their shoulders open and their hips go backwards, and it's just um, a very weak. This club swings left. You get the chicken wing, you know. So yeah, it's funny you say that because I, I listen to ESPN a lot. And it almost sounds yeah. to me like some of these struggling quarterbacks who are like throwing off their back foot. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. probably. It's, I mean, sports. You know, it we is. always say like the stance in sports is very similar. Golf yeah. as well as baseball perhaps might be similar. You know, in the yeah. ready position, and I guess it's similar in the swing as well. well you have to yeah. shift your weight and move it from the back. To the, Absolutely. To the front, I, I mean, anytime you, you know, basically if you're throwing a football, you load into your back leg and then you push off and you throw. And so what happens in golf, it's the same thing in your back swing. You load up into your back, into your back foot, but there's a lot of people who can't physically move the weight back to their inside of their front foot. And so, um, what I do with a lot of my lessons and, and this is something that, cause I see a lot of people who, who scoop the club and it's just because they don't, they, they try to get underneath the ball. It's just they're trying to do something with a club that's not proper. And so what I have them do, and this is a, a fin, uh, this is a, a awesome tip, is I have them take something, whether it be a towel or a bottle cap, or um, I do it. Sometimes I even do it with a with a uh, empty plastic water bottle. I'll put it under their left foot, and I'll say, "All right, we're going to take a little swing back, and I want your first motion to be crushing." the water bottle underneath your front foot. So what you're doing is you're pressuring into the ground with your left foot, or your front foot, I should say. And what happens is that that moves you forward by pressuring your front foot into the ground as you're 
You okay. add, when you take the club back in your backswing, so you're doing a little chip shot. So you take the club back about a foot. You're going to pressure in the front into the into the left foot, um, pressure into the ground with the left foot, left leg. That moves your weight forward and brings the club down into the ground. And so this is just a dynamic motion that most people don't even think about. And and, and athletes and really good players. Uh, if you watch them, the first motion is like the left knee, left leg, that's kind of leading it, and it's all sequencing. And so what happens, you swing the club back, let's say you take a full swing, your first motion is to crush the water bottle or the cap, bottle cap, or I have a towel, I say push the towel into the ground with your left foot. So they push the towel into the ground with their left foot, that transfers their weight forward, and then all of a sudden their arms fall, or their, I should say their, their, their hips turn, their uh, arms fall, the, the, their back stays pointed to the target a little longer, so they swing a little bit in and out. They stop scooping, and it's really, truly an amazing little drill that, that will help any golfer out there create more power, create better ball striking, better contact. It's just a, it's an unbelievable drill that will help, I'd say, probably over 90% of the golfers out there, because I see it every day on the driving range, and None of them are doing it, or very few are doing are you it. You're like snickering at the ones that don't work with you. It's like, ha ha, I can well, help you. No, I mean, you know, everybody's out there for a different reason, whether it be just, you know, stress relief or uh, getting out of the house or tearing up the range. Tearing up the range or just trying to smack some balls or whatever it is. Um, not everybody's looking to, you know, to, to take lessons or whatever, which is fine, which is cool. But, I mean, if they wanted to play better and they wanted to get better, and that's what, you know, if I think if everybody struck the ball better, they'd probably be a lot more golfers out there. And, and this is just one of them where, where basically you're, you're starting to use the proper sequencing. I, I hate using the word big muscles, but it's, it's really not. It's more of a ground pressure, sequencing issue than it is, you know, spinning your hips or spinning, you know, trying to hit the ball with your chest or what, whatever that is because you have the, your hands around the club still, but now they're going to work correctly. And now it's not going to, they're not, you're not going to throw away power, throw away the lag. You're not going to scoop up on it as much. And if you do this, if you start with little chip shots, you know, swing it back a little bit, pressure in the left foot, you know, make a little chip swing, go out, you know, make a little longer swing, a little pitch swing, you know, go back a little bit further and then, you know, like a three quarter swing, punch shot, and then go into a full swing and keep the sequencing going. I mean, no, you, you'll be amazed at how your power changes and how your ball striking changes. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, when you started talking about this drill, you were talking mostly about some of the really bad things that can happen in a swing. Mm-hmm. But even for the folks that hit the ball pretty well, if you want distance on those longer shots, the tee shots, those, you know, uh, fairway woods, you know, into par fives or whatever, transferring that weight, I'm sure, gives you much more power and distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's, uh, that, that part of the golf swing is just so important. I mean, just the biodynamics of the, of a golf swing is where the, the last thing to enter the, the ground is the club head. And there's so many times is that the first thing that enters the ground is the club head. And so it's completely opposite. And so when you're, when you're swinging the club and you want to apply pressure to the back of the ball, the first thing you need to do to pry, apply pressure to the back of the ball is to apply pressure down into the ground with your front lead foot. And that will definitely get you going forward, striking the ball better, and just um, you know playing better golf for sure. So this lesson, you're typically working with people on the range, and so we see a whole bunch of people with bottles and towels <laughs> and, and stuff hey, like that. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. I mean, if somebody can, you know, I, I don't always use teaching aids, but I will um, on occasion just to get the get the point across for somebody who really needs it. I mean, I had a lesson the other day where similar uh, situation where the young lady was spinning her hips back and topping the ball. She's like, why am I topping? Why am I topping? So I showed her what to do. I didn't really tell her about pushing in the ground with her left foot. I just had her move the move the club a little differently um, and got the same result, hit the ball better, chipped it better, pitched it better, went out and played nine holes and played a lot better. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, it really uh, just depends on the person, depends on the type of learning, um, you know, the the situation, how they learn. 
and and just make it work because you got to be creative when you're when you're instructing people. Well, what I like about what you're saying is is while there are many companies that have some tremendous uh, training aids and learning aids, and you know some of them are inexpensive, some are expensive, but right. the fact that you could just take things from around oh. your house and use them to help, yeah, you that's... know, for anybody who's worried about the cost of golf, and golf yeah. can be an expensive game. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I mean, I I saw VJ Singh out on the driving range with uh, with a couple water bottles lined up for his path and. Uh, um, and then a couple alignment sticks, which probably total cost them ten bucks. Right. He can <laughs> you know? afford anything. Yeah, he can he afford anything. Even no, so I mean, you don't you don't have to be elaborate. You don't have to have the latest in the in the Doppler radar and the TrackMan and the forty thousand dollar you know teaching aids. So you can keep it real simple and become a pretty good golfer. Well, and there you have it. Beautiful. Thanks. Free tip. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Every week. It's a wonderful thing. Tons of value. Yeah, that's always. That's how, that's how we roll here. <laughs> that's what we do. The <laughs> more you tell, the better. What we're going to do, I think, is, is take a quick break for a message from one of our sponsors, and then we're going to be back with our first guest, um, and we'll be talking a little bit about the Mission Inn, which is uh, one of my favorite places to play. And uh, what we'll do is take a break and stick with us, and we'll be back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Back and it's time for a message from uh, one of my favorite sponsors, and I think one of yours as well. I'll let yeah. you have the honors, Jess. One hundred percent, and the home of the Just Frank Golf Academy at Boca Dunes Golf and Country Club, where it's a great place to play, and it's located in Boca Raton, Florida, with a par seventy-two championship course and a par three executive course. There's something for all skill levels, and there's also a lighted driving range with practice areas and a snack shop open till ten p.m. It's a great place to host a charity event or a golf outing with a full-service catering facility with all banquet rooms overlooking the golf course. It's a perfect place for weddings, bar mitzvahs, anniversary parties, and any other catered events you may need. If you're looking to get into the game of golf, there are several teaching pros available for private or group lessons. Their friendly staff invites you to come see for yourself, so call the pro shop at 561-451-1600, extension 102, for more information and tea times, you can also visit their website at bocadunes.com. That's bocadunes.com. And we are back, and it's uh, time to talk a little bit about one of my favorite resorts here in Florida. It's uh, a short drive from just about any place in the state, and uh, a, a truly historic uh, golf course and uh, inn, family-owned for 50 years, and that's unusual unto itself, and a place that I've had the pleasure of playing a couple of times this year, and uh, hopefully I will get another chance. But um, not only are they celebrating their 50th anniversary, which the year of their anniversary is just about done, um, but they still have another few days left. <laughs> but they've uh, got some exciting things coming up in the future, uh, being part of the uh, historic Florida Golf Trail and uh, some great deals coming up after the first of the year. So to find oh, yeah. out a little bit more about that, we're going to go back to an expert that's been with us once before, but we invited him back again. Uh, and that would be uh, Bud Boucher. of uh, He's the general manager of the Mission Inn Resort and Club. Bud, are you with us? Uh, Dan, I certainly am, and thank you so very much for allowing me to be on your show again. It was a real <laughs> treat for me the first time, and hopefully I won't lay an egg and you'll invite me for a third time. <laughs> yeah, we don't invite everybody back, I have to tell you, but you're one of our favorite guests, so you're always invited back. So, <laughs> but, but, well, well, thank you. I, sure. Yeah, I want to recap just a little bit about this past year. It was an exciting year. It was your 50th anniversary. I, I had the pleasure of coming to one of the events, I guess, that was kind of the climax of the entire, uh, um, year and, and it was an incredible event, uh, on that Sunday and, and, uh, 
I don't think there were too many dry eyes in the house. It was it was just uh, tears of joy for for some of these folks that that you invited over. Why don't you share a little bit about some of the things or the highlights of your 50th anniversary and and kind of how it all culminated? Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, I guess it started 50 years ago uh, when we purchased the facility in 1964. Uh, my father, uh, my brother Bob, who's the eldest of six, uh, decided that uh, we were going to transition from being in the uh, uh, broader uh, cattle industry out of Chicago as a commodities broker into the recreation business here in Florida. And come forward 50 years, we decided that the weekend before Thanksgiving, we would invite, at no charge, 50 couples who had celebrated 50 years of marriage or longer uh, to come and be our guests, and they could uh, renew their vows. And as part of that, the staff got very, very enthusiastic involved. So we, we, we sprang for brunch. We had flowers. We had course, corsages. We had a minister there to uh, do the, the uh, vow renewal. We had uh, gifts and certificates for them. And it was, as you say, not a dry eye hardly in the house. And to help us celebrate, of course, we had... Uh, Daniel Webster, who is our uh, U.S. Uh, congressman from our district, he came and spoke to the event, and the stories were wonderful. We had one couple who were celebrating their 70th anniversary, Dan, who had actually celebrated their 50th anniversary at the resort. So we had some wonderful pictures of their uh, 50th anniversary held at the resort, uh, and and folks all the way up to just 50 years. It was it was a wonderful day. The staff was just delighted to do this. It, it was wonderful to, to witness, and and I, I was looking forward to it. You know, I, it's it's kind of strange. I mean, I'm not big on going to any weddings. You know, it's really not my thing. But but this was just so original and so unique. And, it, and you know, my first thought was, of course, how do you find all these couples? But but they were all customers of yours, right? In in many cases they were. In in many cases they were not. And and we're very fortunate in that. Uh, you know, we, we live in a part of the state of Florida that has, uh, you know, a reasonable number of uh, 55 and older communities. And so as a byproduct, you know, you have a lot of folks there who have been married for, for 50 years or more. And as I said that day, they were, for me, uh, very inspirational. Uh, being married is uh, uh, something that you work at every day. You have to uh, love your spouse and you have to give them forgiveness and you hope you get the same in return. And these people all had stories of challenges during World War One and Korea and Vietnam and illness and health and happiness and joy and sadness and 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 it was just great to be able to talk to them and listen to them. It was it was just it was just wonderful, spectacular. One of the really cool parts I thought was the photography where several of the couples were trying to reproduce the same poses that they took at their original wedding 50 plus years ago and, and also some of the outfits that they were wearing. I mean, they, they were dressed spectacularly. Oh, I'll tell you, some of those jackets those men had hadn't seen the light of day in 20 years. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were great. Uh, they really were. And, and uh, you know, one of the, the young lady who works for us who really ramrodded the project Melissa Speck had the opportunity in some cases to go to the homes of these people to collect photographs and uh, prior to everyone going out into the courtyard where we do traditional weddings today, uh, those folks were in the ballroom. And so we had a slideshow of their wedding photographs from, you know, 50 years or more ago and pictures of their children. And it was, like I said, it was just great. It was, it was a very moving experience for all of us. It truly was. So so now that that's behind you and we're approaching the holidays, when, when I was up there in November, last I heard, your facility was sold out for Christmas time. I'm not sure about New Year's. Is, is there any availability left this year, or are you really focusing on after the first at this point? No, actually, we, we still have some good availability, not a ton, but we still have some very good availability both for the Christmas season and for New Year's. Now, what you'll find is that for Christmas Day, you know, we're very busy for brunch. We'll do probably close to 1,800 people for brunch on Christmas Day. And so reservation space is limited. If anyone in your viewing area or listing area would have an interest, we'd love to have them come, but they'd better make reservations as quickly as possible uh, to do that. And then we do a, a, a wonderful New Year's party 
uh, black tie optional, uh, live entertainment, as well as a disc jockey. So the entertainment is, you know, ongoing throughout the night. There's no breaks and, uh, they'll go till 1.30 in the morning. It's, 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 it's a great experience. I bet it's, it, like I said, I, I still can't get over the wedding that, that, or the renewal of the vows. It was, it was just crazy. But, um, um, now for, for um, uh, next year, uh, you're, you've got a special package that I recently read about too that sounds very cool. Obviously, after the first of the year in the winter down here in Florida, that, that's our peak season. But you've put together a pretty good deal or a package with all sorts of benefits, correct? We, we did, and it's called our historic package. And it gives, uh, the folks who come and participate on it, it gives them credits in the pro shop. It gives them dinner credits, breakfast, golf, range balls, carts upgraded accommodations to a junior suite, and uh, we rolled that out, and it has been very well received. You know, all the individual component parts, Dan, in that package are discounted, so there's great value in it, and our customers are, are, are good shoppers, and they see a value when they when they know it, and, and so they've gotten on it really very well. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the package is, is known, uh, I guess, as your historic golf package. Why don't you explain to the listeners a little bit about this uh, Florida historic golf trail? Well, it, 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 it's a great thing that the state of Florida is doing, and they're doing it, of course, statewide. It started probably about three years ago. Uh, they contacted us, and it is an effort on the state of Florida's part to create a competitive program to what we all, those of us who are golfers, know as the Robert Trail, Trent Jones Trail in Alabama. And so they are starting a program here for the histor- called the Historic Trail, and Mission Inn is one of only six resorts in the entire state of Florida that's in the program as of right now. And they have selected golf courses that are 50 years in existence or older, and uh, we happen to be probably one of the older ones that's in the program because in 2017, our El Campeon golf course will actually be celebra- celebrating, Dan, its 100th anniversary. That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And, and you know, I, I happen to love older golf courses, but it must take a tremendous amount of work to keep them in the kind of condition that you have your golf courses in. Why don't you explain a little bit about the difficulties of these older golf courses and to maintain a high quality of uh, of golf and, and conditioning? Sure. Well, you know, we have we have we have a number of challenges, and of course, uh, it is the age, of course. And in those days, we had what are called push up greens. They weren't these USGA greens and. Uh, uh, we are very fortunate in that the topography of the resort is very unique. We have elevation differences of up to 85 feet. And so, you know, we have some unique challenges, but we've got a wonderful staff uh, led by Paul Hickman, who is a, uh, probably a, he'll shoot me for saying this, he could be a 40, 45 year veteran as a golf course superintendent. And Paul has had a wonderful career and has been at the resort now for 10 years, and he and his crew do a great job. And, the, the you know, the course is in great shape. Uh, we do not overseed the greens on that course in the wintertime, so they get a little slick, and with the uh, subtle changes in the greens, uh, the, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's a real test of your skills. Well, and I know that um, we had mentioned or we had discussed uh, that you're going to have to plan something special for that 100th anniversary. I can't wait, based upon what you did for, you know, the, the 50th anniversary of the resort, um, what you're going to come up with for the 100th anniversary of the golf course. Well, I would tell you, but we'd be letting the cat out of the bag. But, but I promise you the staff's got a lot of great ideas, and we're working on some of them uh, right now, and, and we've got some great partners uh, in our team that are stepping up right now. So we're, we're excited. Well, you know, it's I, I play golf a lot in Florida. I don't always have a chance to travel too often outside the state, and uh, I'm mostly in the southern part. So, first of all, we don't have those elevations that you have at all. It's it's mm. extremely flat, which um, is fine for a while, but it does get old. Um, also, the the kinds of vegetation that you have, the trees are obviously very different. The hanging moss and the uh, the live oaks, I guess, and um, you know, it, it's it's just a very different look, a very different feel. And, um, 
you know, playing an older golf course is wonderful, but only if the conditioning is there, and, and you guys really do a tremendous job with that. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, we, like I said, we try real hard. It is a, a passion for us that we have had for 50 years, and we're not going to give up on it. Well, I certainly hope not. And um, All right, so this, this special package that you have, this historic package, as well as uh, your holiday events that are going on for Christmas and New Year's, if folks are interested in finding out more or making reservations, what should they do? Well, there, there's a couple of ways that they can go if they'd like to speak to someone. Uh, they can call our reservations department at 1-800-874-9053. 